In the vast reaches of the galaxy, countless civilizations rise and fall. Many possess technologies that make them appear invincible, towering in power over other species. Among these mighty empires, there is one species that stands out, not because of their strength, their numbers, or their advancements, but because of their unexpected ability to survive and, when necessary, fight back. That species is humanity. The Galactic Empire, a coalition of the most advanced species in the known universe, knows well the dangers of underestimating others. They have subjugated countless worlds, annexed countless civilizations, and crushed opposition without much effort. But in the quiet corridors of their highest councils, one subject always lingers, whispered with a mix of awe and fear, humans. Most species within the empire consider humanity to be primitive. To them, Earth is a backwater planet, home to beings who, in comparison to the galactic empire's most revered members, are crude and undeveloped. Humanity's history of war and self-destruction paints them as reckless and savage. Their short lifespans, relative to many other species, are seen as a disadvantage. They burn brightly, but only for a moment. Their lack of natural abilities, such as telepathy or extraordinary physical strength, makes them seem insignificant. On the galactic stage, humans shouldn't matter. Yet the galactic empire learns something different. Something that turned the tides of countless battles, changed the course of their history, and forced them to respect, even fear, humanity. In secret communications, high-ranking officials within the Galactic Empire have delivered a simple message to certain alien factions, never mess with humans. These messages aren't shared lightly, and they're not born out of baseless superstition. They stem from incidents, hard-won lessons from alien species who dared to underestimate humanity and paid the ultimate price. The Galactic Empire's warning isn't just about humans being unpredictable. It's about the core of what makes humans dangerous in a way that few other species could ever match. The first thing the Empire learned is that humans are not just survivors. They are innovators. When pushed into a corner, humans adapt. They learn faster than any species the Galactic Empire has encountered. Their ingenuity knows no bounds. Consider the countless times humanity has reverse-engineered technology far beyond their means. Aliens would arrive on Earth, armed with weapons and technologies that humans could only dream of. But it never took long for humanity to catch up. In mere decades, or even less, they would learn to not only use the alien tech but to improve upon it. They would find weaknesses in it that the original creators hadn't even considered. Humans possess a frightening ability to repurpose whatever they get their hands on and they do so at a speed that shocks even the most advanced species in the galaxy. The second lesson the Empire learned is about humanity's endurance. It isn't just their capacity to innovate that terrifies their enemies, it's their sheer will to survive. No matter how dire the situation, humans persist. Time and again, when other species would have given up, humans keep fighting. Their bodies, while weaker than many alien species, recover from injuries in ways that astound galactic medics. They push through pain, through loss, through devastation, with a tenacity that defies reason. Empires that have tried to enslave or dominate them have learned this lesson the hard way. Humans don't break. They adapt. They endure. And when the time comes, they fight back with everything they have. What the Empire has realized is that humanity's resilience isn't just physical. It's mental. It's emotional. And perhaps most importantly, it's strategic. Humans have a unique relationship with war. Where many species view conflict as a last resort, something to avoid at all costs, humanity has thrived in the crucible of battle. Their history is filled with wars, wars fought for survival, for resources, for freedom. And while their propensity for violence might seem like a flaw, in the eyes of the Galactic Empire, it is one of their greatest strengths. In war, humans are unpredictable. They don't follow patterns. They don't rely on sheer strength alone. They outthink their enemies, finding weaknesses, exploiting them, and turning the tide of battles in ways that no one saw coming. The Galactic Empire has witnessed human forces outmaneuver much larger and more technologically advanced armies. Their creativity in warfare is unmatched, whether through guerrilla tactics, technological subterfuge, or psychological warfare. 
This unpredictability is what truly terrifies the Galactic Empire. No matter how advanced the enemy, no matter how powerful their fleets, humans always find a way to win. And it isn't always by brute force. Often, it's through strategy, diplomacy, or simply outlasting their foes. Where other species might falter under pressure, humanity thrives. One particularly infamous incident stands as a testament to this. A powerful alien species, known for their cruelty and domination, attempted to invade Earth. Confident in their superiority, they expected a swift and easy victory. What they encountered instead was a human race that fought back harder than they had ever anticipated. It wasn't just the weapons humans used or their advanced strategies. It was their will to survive. In the end, the invaders were driven back, humiliated and broken. They had underestimated humanity, and it cost them dearly. It is stories like these that form the basis of the Galactic Empire's warning. They aren't idle threats or exaggerated tales. They are hard truths learned from bitter experience. Humanity's ability to adapt, their endurance in the face of insurmountable odds, and their unparalleled creativity in warfare make them a species unlike any other. For the Galactic Empire, this isn't just a lesson learned. It is a law of survival. The Galactic Empire, for all its power, respects and fears humanity in equal measure. They understand that while humans might seem fragile or insignificant on the surface, they possess qualities that make them one of the most dangerous species in the galaxy. And for those who dare to cross them, the warning is clear, never mess with humans. The question then becomes why? What is it about humans that allows them to defy all odds, to take down enemies far more advanced than themselves? The Galactic Empire has pondered this question for centuries. The answer, it seems, lies not in their technology, nor their weapons, but in their spirit. A spirit that refuses to be broken, no matter the circumstances. Humans are not just fighters. They are thinkers, survivors, and creators. They are a force of nature, unpredictable and unstoppable. And for those who think otherwise, the galaxy is filled with the remnants of those who made that mistake. The Galactic Empire learned their lesson well. They spread the word to any species considering an attack on humanity. Never mess with humans. Because once you do, once you push them too far, there is no turning back. They will rise, adapt, endure, and ultimately they will win. It all started with an alien race, technologically superior and confident in their ability to subjugate what they saw as an inferior species, humans. They arrived at Earth in massive, advanced ships, equipped with weapons that far exceeded anything humanity had ever developed. Their confidence was palpable. They had conquered many planets before, each time meeting little resistance from the local population, and Earth was just another target. Humans, in their eyes, were a fragile species, barely out of their own solar system and with no real understanding of the universe's complexities. The alien invaders saw this as an easy conquest, an opportunity to expand their dominion without much effort. Earth's defenses, composed of primitive missiles and crude space vessels, didn't even pose a challenge to their might. The first wave of attack was swift. Cities were leveled, and human forces were quickly overwhelmed by the aliens' advanced technology. It seemed inevitable that humanity would fall. However, this is where the story takes an unexpected turn. Humans, faced with overwhelming odds, didn't surrender. Instead, they quickly adapted to the situation. Military forces, scattered and disorganized at first, began to regroup. The surviving engineers and scientists got to work on something the alien invaders never saw coming, reverse engineering their own technology. It wasn't the first time humans had encountered technology far beyond their own, and history had shown that humanity's greatest strength lay in their ability to learn and adapt. Within days of the invasion, human scientists had managed to capture a few pieces of alien technology carefully dismantling and studying it. What the aliens had viewed as their greatest advantage quickly became their biggest vulnerability. Humanity's ability to understand and improve upon foreign technology was unprecedented, and in this case, it was a game-changer. At first, the aliens didn't notice. They continued their assault, assuming that Earth's defenses were crumbling and victory was at hand. But slowly, 
they began to encounter resistance in places they hadn't expected. Human forces, once disorganized, now began to strike back with new tactics and, more alarmingly for the aliens, new weapons. These weren't just the rudimentary tools of war that humans had used before. These were improved versions of the aliens' own technology, now turned against them. The tide began to shift. The aliens, still confident in their superiority, were slow to recognize the threat. By the time they realized what was happening, it was too late. Human forces, now armed with reverse-engineered alien weapons, launched coordinated strikes against the invaders. They knew the weak points of the alien ships because they had studied them. They knew how to bypass the shields because they had learned how to exploit the gaps. What had started as a one-sided battle had now turned into a full-scale war, and humans were no longer on the losing side. In a matter of weeks, the humans had developed technology that not only matched the alien invaders but, in some cases, surpassed it. This was something the invaders had never encountered before. Every species they had conquered before had either been too primitive or too slow to react. But humans were different. Their ability to adapt under pressure was unlike anything the aliens had seen. It wasn't just about copying the technology. It was about making it better. The final blow came when human forces, now equipped with a fleet of hybrid human-alien ships, launched a counterattack. They had been patient, studying their enemy, waiting for the right moment to strike. And when they did, it was devastating. The alien fleet, once confident in their dominance, was caught completely off guard. Their own weapons were turned against them, their strategies unraveled by humans who had spent every waking hour figuring out how to beat them at their own game. The humans weren't just defending their planet anymore, they were taking the fight to the alien invaders. The roles had reversed. The aliens, once the hunters, were now the hunted. Their ships were destroyed, their forces decimated, and their once unshakable confidence shattered. But the humans didn't stop there. In true HFY fashion, they decided that mere survival wasn't enough. They wanted to send a message. So, using the technology they had captured and improved upon, they launched a direct assault on the aliens' homeworld. It was an audacious move, one that no other species had ever dared to attempt. The aliens, now reeling from the sudden shift in power, were caught completely unprepared. When the humans arrived in their skies, it wasn't just with a fleet of stolen ships. They had adapted the technology, made it their own, and added their unique brand of innovation to it. The alien defenses, once thought impenetrable, crumbled under the assault. Their cities, once symbols of power and dominance, were reduced to rubble. The message was clear. Humanity wasn't a species to be trifled with. What made this victory even more astounding was the speed at which it all happened. In the span of a few months, humans had gone from a species on the brink of extinction to a galactic power capable of toppling an empire. The aliens, for all their arrogance and technological superiority, had never anticipated that a species as primitive as humans could adapt so quickly, learn so efficiently, and fight back with such ferocity. The human ability to turn disadvantage into strength, to not just survive but thrive in the face of overwhelming odds, had stunned the galaxy. What the alien invaders thought would be an easy victory had become their greatest defeat, and they were left to pick up the pieces of their shattered empire. The Galactic Empire, watching from afar, took note of these events. They saw what happened when a species underestimated humanity. It was a lesson learned by many, but perhaps none so painfully as the alien invaders who thought they could conquer Earth. Humanity's ability to reverse engineer, adapt, and then innovate was something no other species had encountered, and it was a lesson the Galactic Empire would never forget. For the humans, it was just another chapter in their long history of overcoming insurmountable odds. They had proven once again that no matter how advanced their enemies might be, they would always find a way to turn the tide. And for those who still doubted their strength, the wreckage of the alien invaders' fleet served as a stark reminder. Humans were not to be underestimated. This story, like many others, became a legend throughout the galaxy. It was told and retold, a warning to any species that might think of crossing humanity. The humans had turned what should have been their greatest weakness into their greatest strength. They had not only survived the invasion, 
they had emerged stronger than ever before. The aliens, once proud and powerful, had learned a hard truth, never mess with humans. Because once humans are pushed to the brink, they don't just fight back. They evolve, and when they do, there's no stopping them. The alien captors were ruthless, known across the galaxy for their cruel treatment of prisoners. They had conquered dozens of planets, capturing slaves, using sentient beings as expendable labor, or worse, as test subjects for their sadistic experiments. When they came across a human exploratory mission in deep space, they saw nothing unusual. Humans were just another species to dominate, another group to exploit. They captured the small human crew with ease, locking them in cold, sterile cells aboard their massive prison ship. The captors were certain of one thing, the humans would break, just like all the others had. What the aliens didn't realize, however, was that humans had an uncanny ability to endure. From the moment they were imprisoned, the humans experienced every imaginable form of torment. The aliens starved them, subjected them to exhausting physical labor, and employed psychological tactics to shatter their spirits. The humans, at first, seemed weak. Their captors took pleasure in watching the prisoners struggle through the grueling conditions, confident that they would soon give in. But something strange happened. Days turned into weeks, and the humans didn't break. Yes, they were suffering. Yes, they were pushed to their limits. But unlike many other species, the humans didn't lose hope. They didn't beg for mercy or surrender to the despair that had taken so many others before them. Instead, they formed a bond with each other, growing stronger as a unit. The aliens noticed, but they didn't care. In their arrogance, they believed that no matter how long it took, everyone had a breaking point. Humans were no different. They would fall, eventually, just like all the others had. But the truth was, the humans were different. What the aliens couldn't understand was the resilience of the human spirit. No matter how dark the situation, no matter how hopeless it seemed, humans always found a way to keep going. The prisoners communicated in whispers, plotting, planning. They knew that escape wasn't just about overpowering their captors or finding a way out of their cells. It was about endurance, outlasting the torment, and waiting for the right moment. The aliens continued to subject them to brutal conditions, but with each passing day, the humans grew more determined. They worked together, finding ways to conserve energy, sneaking bits of food to those who needed it most, and offering each other encouragement in the darkest hours. As time went on, the aliens became frustrated. Their usual methods weren't working. Humans weren't breaking. They weren't losing hope, and more importantly, they weren't turning on each other. The alien captors had seen it before with other species. Prisoners would eventually fight among themselves, compete for scraps, and betray one another just to survive. But not the humans. They remained united, resilient in their refusal to let their captors win. Weeks passed, then months. The humans were still alive, still resisting in their own quiet way. The aliens intensified their efforts, increasing the labor demands and pushing the prisoners to their physical limits. Yet, somehow, the humans kept going. The aliens, in their arrogance, believed it was only a matter of time before the prisoners collapsed. But what they didn't understand was that humans had faced worse. On their own planet, they had survived wars, famines, and disasters. Their bodies and minds were conditioned to withstand suffering, and they had developed an almost supernatural ability to endure the unimaginable. And then, the humans did something that truly confounded their captors. They started to fight back. At first, it was small acts of defiance. Sabata. Tools that. Went missing. Machines that. Malfunctioned. The aliens suspected sabotage but could never prove it. The humans worked together, carefully hiding their tracks, waiting for the right moment to strike. Their acts of defiance became bolder, and with each small victory, their morale grew. They were no longer just surviving, they were preparing for something bigger. The alien guards, still confident in their control, didn't see the danger that was brewing right under their noses. They underestimated the humans, dismissing them as primitive beings incapable of mounting a real resistance. But the humans had a plan, and they had been working on it for months. In secret, they communicated with each other, passing messages from cell to cell, coordinating their efforts. 
Every human prisoner had a role to play, and they knew that their only chance of survival depended on precise timing. The moment came on a day that seemed like any other. The aliens, going about their usual routines, were completely unprepared for what was about to happen. The humans, acting as one, launched their escape plan. They overwhelmed their guards, using every bit of strength they had conserved over the months. They sabotaged key systems on the prison ship, causing chaos and confusion. Alarms blared as the humans fought their way through the corridors, overpowering their captors with nothing but their bare hands and improvised weapons. The aliens, caught off guard and disorganized, tried to mount a defense, but it was too late. The humans had gained control of key areas of the ship, and they weren't stopping. They had suffered for months, endured unimaginable pain, and now, they were fighting back with everything they had. The aliens, once so confident in their superiority, found themselves outmatched by the very beings they had thought would crumble under pressure. What made the human uprising so devastating was their sheer determination. Every single prisoner fought like they had nothing to lose because, for months, they had been preparing for this moment. They had endured, outlasted, and now they were winning. The alien captors, shocked by the ferocity of the human resistance, fled in panic, abandoning their posts as the humans took control of the ship. In a matter of hours, the humans had turned the tide. What had once been a prison now belonged to them. They didn't just escape, they took everything from their captors. The alien species that had once prided itself on breaking the will of its prisoners had been utterly defeated by the very beings they had underestimated from the start. The humans didn't stop there. They sent a message across the galaxy, a warning to any who might think of capturing or enslaving their kind. Humans don't break. No matter how much you push them, no matter how much you hurt them, they will endure. And when the time comes, they will fight back with a strength you never thought possible. This story became a legend, passed from one corner of the galaxy to another. It served as a testament to the resilience and strength of the human spirit. No matter how dire the situation, no matter how powerful the enemy, humans had proven once again that they were not to be underestimated. For those who heard the tale, the message was clear. Humans may suffer, but they will never give up. They may be beaten down, but they will always rise again. And when they do, they won't just escape, they will destroy those who thought they could break them. The Galactic Empire, watching these events unfold, took notice. They had seen many species come and go, but none like humanity. It wasn't just their technology or their physical abilities that made them dangerous. It was their spirit, their ability to endure even the most extreme conditions and come out stronger on the other side. This was why the Empire warned others about humans. They knew that once you captured a human, you hadn't won. You had only begun to face the true danger. Because humans don't surrender. They don't break. And when the time comes, they will turn the tables, no matter how impossible it may seem. The alien delegation arrived at the negotiation table with smug confidence. They had been in control from the moment they made their demands. Humanity, to them, was a weak species, outnumbered, outgunned, and outclassed in every way. The terms were simple. Surrender a substantial portion of Earth's resources, or face total annihilation. The aliens had offered no room for compromise. This was how they operated, intimidation and brute force. They expected humanity to fold quickly, to grovel and beg for mercy, as so many other species had done before. The human representatives, however, didn't react as expected. They didn't panic, nor did they appear overly concerned. They listened carefully to the demands, nodding along as the aliens outlined their terms. The human negotiators, seemingly powerless in the face of such overwhelming force, asked for time. A day, perhaps two, to consider their options. The aliens agreed, believing the humans were stalling out of desperation, hoping to find some way to appease their new overlords. What the aliens didn't know was that this delay was part of a far more intricate plan. Humanity had no intention of surrendering, nor were they simply stalling in the hopes of finding a peaceful solution. Behind the scenes, Human leaders had been preparing for this confrontation long before the alien delegation arrived. They had studied their opponents carefully, learning everything they could about their culture, their strategies, 
and most importantly, their weaknesses. The aliens, in their arrogance, had no idea how closely they were being watched or how methodically their movements were being tracked. As the negotiations dragged on, the aliens became more forceful in their rhetoric, threatening to withdraw their offer of leniency and move straight to invasion. What they didn't know was that humanity was already several steps ahead. The apparent hesitation and indecision from the human negotiators was nothing more than a facade, designed to lull the aliens into a false sense of security. Meanwhile, deep in space, human forces were quietly moving into position, preparing for a counter-strike that the aliens wouldn't see coming. The human leadership had made a crucial decision early on. They couldn't win through conventional means. The alien forces were too vast, too advanced. A direct military confrontation would be suicide. But humans had a knack for thinking outside the box, for coming up with unconventional solutions to impossible problems. Instead of relying on brute force, they would use strategy, subterfuge, and deception. It was the only way to level the playing field. For weeks, while the negotiations continued, human scientists and engineers worked in secret, developing new technologies designed specifically to exploit the aliens' weaknesses. They had studied the alien ships, their energy systems, and their methods of communication. They knew where the cracks were, even if the aliens themselves didn't. And now, with everything in place, it was time to put the plan into action. As the aliens grew impatient, demanding immediate compliance, the humans finally made their move. They agreed to meet one last time, under the guise of formalizing the terms of their surrender. The alien commanders were all present, smugly awaiting their victory. They were so focused on their conquest that they failed to notice the subtle shifts happening around them. They didn't see the hidden signals exchanged between the human negotiators, nor did they detect the quiet activation of cloaked human vessels hovering just outside their detection range. The humans had planned their strike meticulously. Every detail had been accounted for. They knew the aliens' communication systems, their security protocols, and their defense mechanisms. And in that final meeting, as the aliens prepared to finalize their demands, humanity struck. It wasn't a massive fleet that descended from the skies, nor a barrage of firepower. Instead, it was a series of precision attacks, strategically targeted, perfectly timed. First, the alien communication systems went down. Their ships, scattered across the solar system, were suddenly cut off from each other, unable to coordinate. Before they could even react, key power systems on their vessels were disabled, leaving them vulnerable. It wasn't an all-out assault. It was surgical. Humans had taken the time to understand exactly how their enemies operated, and they exploited every weakness. The aliens, for all their technological superiority, were caught completely off guard. They had been prepared for a direct fight, but what they encountered instead was a human strategy that dismantled them piece by piece. Panic spread quickly among the alien ranks. Their once impenetrable fleet was now defenseless, their command structure in chaos. Human forces, now fully engaged, moved swiftly to capitalize on the confusion. Small, agile ships, outfitted with the latest in human innovation, swarmed the alien vessels, targeting critical systems and disabling them before the aliens could even mount a proper defense. Back at the negotiation table, the alien leaders finally realized what was happening. They had been outplayed. The humans had never been on the verge of surrender. They had been orchestrating a trap all along. The facade of weakness had been nothing more than a ruse, a way to buy time and lure the aliens into a false sense of superiority. And now, it was too late. The aliens had underestimated the humans, and they were paying the price for their arrogance. The human negotiators, calm and composed throughout the entire ordeal, stood as the reality of the situation began to sink in for their alien counterparts. The humans had never intended to bow to the aliens' demands. They had used the time to prepare their forces, to craft a strategy that exploited every possible vulnerability in the alien fleet. And now, with the aliens in disarray, the humans delivered their final message. There would be no surrender. There would be no tribute. The humans had not only defended themselves but had turned the tables entirely. They were no longer just fighting for survival. They were now on the offensive. The alien leaders, 
once so confident in their dominance, found themselves at the mercy of a species they had grossly underestimated. The battle, if it could even be called that, was over before it had truly begun. The aliens, unable to regroup or mount a counterattack, were forced to retreat, their ships limping away in disgrace. Humanity, through strategy, deception, and an unyielding will to survive, had won. The lesson, once again, was clear, never underestimate humans. What the aliens had thought was a simple negotiation for resources had turned into a humiliating defeat, one that would be remembered throughout the galaxy. Humanity had proven, yet again, that they were far more than what they appeared to be. They didn't rely on brute strength or superior technology. They relied on their ability to adapt, to think strategically, and to exploit every opportunity. The Galactic Empire, watching from a distance, took note of this victory. It wasn't the first time humans had turned an impossible situation into a stunning success, and it wouldn't be the last. Their ability to outthink and outmaneuver even the most advanced alien species was a testament to their resilience, their creativity, and their relentless refusal to be dominated. For those who doubted humanity's place in the galaxy, this was a sobering reminder. Humans don't fight fair. They don't need to. They fight smart, and when pushed into a corner, they will find a way to win, no matter the odds. The aliens who had come to conquer Earth learned that lesson the hard way, and their defeat served as a warning to anyone else who might think of challenging humanity in the future. The Galactic Empire, having seen this play out time and time again, knew the truth. Humans weren't just survivors. They were strategists, planners, and innovators. And for anyone foolish enough to challenge them, the outcome would always be the same. Victory belonged to humanity.